Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dappy Diversity. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about stable coins and why you should build one. So I'm gonna talk about you know what stable coins are and how they work and how easy it is to bootstrap one yourself on top of the Ethereum blockchain with smart contracts. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. So what is a stablecoin? Well, a stablecoin is a cryptocurrency that kind of does what it sounds like. It tries to maintain a stable price. And, you know, you might have heard of some other stablecoins out there like Tether or MakerDAO. And that's what these currencies try to do. They basically try to maintain an even price in contrast to lots of other cryptocurrencies out there where the price is very volatile, you know, it just goes up and down and up and down. So that's what a stable coin is. And, you know, why would you want to use a stable coin? Why would you want to hold one? Well, you know, a lot of uh, blockchain startups out there who have either created their own tokens uh, and ICOs or um, just other blockchain startups that, you know, hold the crypto for any kind of reason that want to keep funds in the crypto ecosystem. Sometimes they would rather put their, uh, you know, crypto funds into a digital asset, into a cryptographic asset like a stable coin because they feel more confident that it's going to hold the value um, in that crypto as opposed to holding it in something like Bitcoin or Ether where they're kind of unsure of what the price is going to do, you know, depending on if you're in a bull market or a bear market. Um, you know, some people are looking to these stable coins as a way to, you know, secure their crypto assets at, at a very even rate. Um, so it's not just blockchain startups either. It's also, you know, just investors. You know, stable coin provides a real utility value, especially if it's listed on an exchange. Like I think Tether's listed on Binance. And if you're making trades, um, you'd be able to, you know, cash out of one, you know, asset into uh, Tether or, you know, just exchange into Tether on the exchange itself and hold your funds that way in your, in your wallet so that you could, you know, be sure that your funds were, you know, secure and stable. Um, you know, other, other exchanges that are crypto only that don't support fiat currency might support another stable coin. Um, and that's a really great use case for doing that. So how do stable coins work? Well, so a stable coin is based on this idea of, you know, collateral or collateralized assets. So basically what a stable coin does is, you know, on the other side of its value, you know, on the one hand, you know, we have an actual digital cryptocurrency that's you know, backed by a blockchain ledger of some kind that basically, you know, determines who owns how much of each, you know, unit of currency, whether it's a token or a native cryptocurrency on a blockchain or whatever, whatever. Um, they basically say that, you know, for this currency over here, it's equal to X amount of actual assets on the other side of that currency. So basically they map it from one to one with something called a peg. So the peg is basically the mapping of the asset to another. So in the case of something like Tether, um, Tether basically says that for every one Tether you hold, uh, you have, you know, it's good for one US dollar. And this idea of collateralization um, gets tied to different types of assets. Um, you know, it can be fiat currency, it can be uh, cryptocurrency, it can be any other asset that actually has real value. Like, you know, people are able to do this with, uh, you know, other traditional assets like gold, precious metals, real estate, um, stuff like that. The trick is being able to provide liquidity for those kinds of things. And that'll kind of get me to explain the next point, which is, you know, how do you actually map this and how does that work? Well, uh, the idea is that if someone's going to create a stable coin, they should be able to, you know, redeem their currency, their token or whatever from, you know, the issuer for a certain amount that the issuer guarantees or, you know, says it's worth. And, 
so basically, if you were to issue a stablecoin that was backed by the U.S. dollar, um, someone could come to you and purchase tokens for U.S. dollar. They could say, I'll give you $10 and you'll give me 10 tokens. And, you know, you, the company should be able to provide some liquidity to say, all right, you gave me $10. I'll give you these 10 tokens or 10 units of my own crypto, right? And also, you could say the reverse. So you say, I have 10 of such stable coin. I want to sell them back to the issuer. And the issuer will take them. And they will give you back 10 of whatever asset you, you, you know, are able to claim from them. So, and the issuer is responsible for holding, you know, any amount of reserve they need in order to provide that liquidity and also actually back their token or their cryptocurrency. So, you know, if everyone decided they wanted to cash in, they would need to be able to, of course, um, provide that. So let's look at that a little more. So like Tether's doing that. This is, I got Tether pulled up here on my computer. Um, so Tether's doing this for the US dollar. There's also MakerDAO, which you might've heard of, which is doing this with cryptocurrency with smart contracts. So MakerDAO is allowing you is, is, or is basically uh, providing collateral, not in fiat currency, but in cryptocurrency. And they're doing this sort of spread across a lot of different assets. So you can, you know, basically obtain MakerDAO um, and its values can be backed by different crypto assets. So like I said, there's all kinds of different assets you could use to, to collateralize a stable coin. You could use fiat currency, you could use cryptocurrency, crypto assets. Um, other asset classes, traditional asset classes, as long as you can provide liquidity for the actual currency itself and actually back and guarantee its value. So that's how it works from a you know, high level kind of generalized overview. Now let's kind of talk about you know, why you should build one and, and you know, how easy it is to bootstrap one on the Ethereum blockchain with smart contracts. So, you know, some of these stable coins are basically issued on top of, you know, another blockchain or they, they you know, you might want to build your own blockchain in order to, uh, you know, create a cryptocurrency. Well, the beauty of, you know, launching your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum is you can do it with smart contracts. And, you know, you can basically create an Ethereum token, which is, you know, run by smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain without having to create your own blockchain yourself. And so you can basically create your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum with the smart contract um, and make a stable coin that way. And you, all you have to do is basically um, provide some sort of assets to back it up in order to uh, create your own stable coin. So basically you can create the reserve of all your collateral that backs the value of the stable coin. Um, this could be, you know, fiat currency. It could be basically a bank account, a bunch of bank accounts that you could spread assets all over. Um, it could be, you know, other types of, um, you know, traditional assets. It could be crypto assets. And what you have to do is basically provide PEG, a one-to-one -one mapping of the, your token to the collateral itself in reserves. And that's what's cool about Ethereum is that you can bootstrap this without having to launch your own blockchain and get a bunch of other people to participate in the network in order to run the nodes. So it's a really great platform to start experimenting um, because that's what's really cool right now is there are all these stablecoin experiments out there and there's a lot of room um, to figure this out. And there's a lot of you know, good resources to get started doing this with Ethereum and to bootstrap a project uh, that can run a stable coin. So I hope that was helpful. Um, that's all I got for today. If you got any more questions, leave a comment down in the comment section below. And also be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And again, click the thumbs up button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn about building blockchain technology. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.